Greetings, I'm Lee, your humble game master. Tonight I'll be reviewing Warlock by Greg Saunders from Fire Ruby Designs. I, I picked up a PDF copy of this game from Drive RPG for five British pounds, which is an absolute bargain for about 150 pages of of content. Uh, and as soon as I started looking through it on my phone, I knew I would like this game. Uh, so I continued to to read it on my tablet and go through everything here. And I thought I really need to tell you all about it in this review. But what is Warlock? Warlock styles itself as a game inspired by the early days of British tabletop gaming, something that, as a British role player, I'm very interested in. In particular, the game draws two very clear inspirations uh, from the, the fighting fantasy games and Warhammer fantasy role playing. Both very obviously favourites of mine if you've seen any of my videos where I talk about these games. Um, the, the Britishness could also be seen in in fantasy movies like Excalibur, which is very underrated and, and full of beautiful, dark, brooding uh, cinematography, and, and Hawk the Slayer, which is probably as underrated as it should be, but has as plenty of charm. It would also be remiss of me not to mention the other mainstays of British fantasy with things like a Robin of Sherwood and, um, of course, Nightmare, elements of which all pervade the atmosphere of any British fantasy game, including Warlock. Now, before I go too far into the review, I want to upfront call on the two big inspirations for the game, so that fans of Warhammer fantasy role-playing and fighting fantasy can see exactly why this might be the game for them. So from fighting fantasy, the game takes the following, skill, stamina, and luck, uh, those three familiar stats, and something of the task resolution system, ish. You'll see here, skill is in fact skills, and that's because you have ratings in numerous skills rather than just the one skill attribute, but as you'll find later, it still feels very familiar. The task resolution for combat is similar, but using a 20-sided die rather than uh, two six-sided ones. To be honest, I'd I would have loved to have had the, um, the old 2d6, but a d20 isn't a bad thing. So from Warhammer Fantasy, the game gets its careers, um, rather than classes, uh, with you be able to sort of roll them up just like in Warhammer. You also progress through careers rather than just levelling up like in other games. Combat is deadly and you can get lasting injury specific to the location that you're hit. Uh, and the implied setting is generally late medieval early renaissance like the world of Warhammer. So with those two comparisons out of the way, let's see what more Warlock has to offer on its own merits. So here we are, Warlock, a game inspired by the early days of British tabletop gaming. Uh, written by Greg Saunders and we have all of the artists attributed here um, from Fire Ruby Designs. So here I'm going to let the game speak for itself. Uh, we have here, um, Welcome to Warlock. Warlock is a rules-like role-playing game that aims to emulate the feeling of old-school British tabletop games of wondrous and fantastical adventure. Warlock looks to reproduce the play style of its illustrious predecessors, but in a light, quick and simple manner, with a consistent rule set that is easily hackable and adaptable as desired. That's a rather nice uh, uh, mission statement. So the... The game doesn't have a setting per se, but an implied one. An early renaissance setting referred to as the Kingdom of Man, a human-centric realm of gritty, perilous adventure. There is mention of a warlock who seems to be responsible for, or at least attributed to, uh, some of the ills of the world. It also presents us with the idea that not all so-called monster races are necessarily evil, and you can't just kill a goblin for, for being a goblin. So, so far, what's not to like? But what is a game, or indeed a world, without characters to inhabit and explore it? So, characters in Warlock have a few traits and features, including the attributes, skill, stamina, and luck. And um, you see here, career, community, their skill, stamina, and luck, and then your, your traits. Um, so, um, you've got everything down there. And here is a copy of the character sheet. It's, it's a little plain, but very practical with everything you need all laid out there. So, beginning with attributes, you have your your skills, which, are, as you can imagine, are things that you can do. You select a set number of uh, ratings for all of your skills um, in the skill section here. So, the skills shown on the character sheet, uh, see the back of the book, are known as the adventuring skills. All skills have a level. The, uh, the higher, the better. Characters are competent individuals, so they start with some aptitude here. Ten of the skills on the sheet you can mark out level 6, 
These are where your character has the most natural ability. Ten more begin at level five, and the rest start at level four. And there's a description of each skill starting on page 16. Um, so you, you select the, um, the set numbers for these skills, and you also get some picks based on your career within certain limits. And um, there's the adventuring skills page, and while we're here, you can see the sort of layout there of the page. This is fairly, fairly reflective of the layout of the, the book, and nice and clear with this sort of typewritten font. And we've got a couple of example skills like appraise, athletics, bargain, blunt, bow, and there's a whole bunch of other ones throughout. Now, uh, you also have stamina and luck which are very similar to uh, fighting fantasy and you can see how they're derived there stamina is 2d6 plus 12, luck 1d6 plus 7 um, and these are things like stamina is your health, your fitness and that sort of thing and your luck is is basically how much fortune favours you um, and generally speaking if something bad's going to happen you test your luck to see if that's positive or, or negative there so now uh, the fun, the fun part. In Warlock, it isn't assumed that you're like a fighter or a rogue or a cleric. You have a profession or a career. You roll them randomly, but you get four goes to get something you like the sound of. So you would roll four six-sided dice, and then depending on what you've got on your first, second, third, and fourth die, corresponds to uh, a career. So you could be a beggar, a boatman, a gambler, a mercenary, a thief, a tomb robber, or or anything else there. Um, now here is an example of one of the careers, the the grave robber, um, and the first thing you should see here are the sort of career skills that they would have and the maximum limits they can go up to. So intimidate ten, ostler ten, persuasion twelve, small blade twelve, and sport a uh, spot twelve. And um, then a little bit of a description about the the career. Uh, certainly not how you imagined your life going, but sometimes you have to do what fate decided. For some reason, certain people want bodies, and someone's got to supply them. You have no problem starting. Uh, you have no problem staring the recently dead in the face, as long as it puts food on the table and clothes on your back. The smell is bad, though hard to get rid of, and people often seem to avoid you. Ah well. Then you have the equipment of the uh, your career, and then you've also got these really nice little uh, random tables. These are fantastic. So. Who have you recently dug up? So you roll a d6, and it could be your mother. Oh, wow. Um, a traitor wrongly hanged as a wizard. And then who seeks you? Possibly, uh, perhaps beyond death, so another d6. And it could be the Van Hocken family, beset with grief. Or your lover, who you buried and robbed. So uh, some lovely um, imagery there. Um, but all great for your character and their motivation. You can also have advanced careers that you can move into later on as you become sort of more important in the world, uh, so you don't have to be a rat catcher all your life. Um, so that's the, the characters, let's check out the system. The system is very simple, uh, you roll a 20 sided die, you add your skill and try and beat 20, can't get simpler than that. The GM can impose penalties if they feel something should be uh, more difficult, and for imposed tests it's much the same, however you both roll and the highest roll wins. Combat builds on this, though rather interestingly, when you attack a foe, you risk taking damage if you lose the opposed roll. So in melee combat, if you initiate the attack, you get plus five to this roll. As the book says, fortune favours the brave. If you hit, you roll some damage on some six-sided dice, and uh, you reduce this by an amount uh, based on your opponent's armour, which is also rolled. If the roll you get is three times what your opponent rolls, you inflict a mighty strike, which is basically uh, double damage. And if you reduce your foe to zero stamina, you inflict a critical hit, which you roll on a corresponding table to inflict a specific injury. Uh, so in the example here, a cut on the thigh, meaning you can only hobble for 1d3 days, an endurance test uh, not to end up with a, a limp. But um, what is combat and fantasy adventure without some foes? So there's a full selection of, of beasts and um, uh, foes in the book. Uh, here's an example, it's a dire wolf. As you can see, it's very uh, clearly and cleanly laid out with everything you need economically presented. So the type of creature it is, a monster, the number of actions it's got in around one. Weapon skill and damage, just all on one line there. Armor, adventuring skills and stamina, and a, a nice little description there of the creature. So it's got it all uh, set out for you. And uh, if you think monsters are important to fantasy, even low fantasy needs a little bit of, of magic. 
Um, and Warlock has an interesting take on magic, which I think is a very clever one. So basically, anyone can cast a spell, and all spells come from, from scrolls, but you need to make a, a certain skill roll to accomplish that. And the less skilled you are, the more chance there is of something going horribly wrong. Wizards are just better better at it, um, so they've got more chance of succeeding. But there's no innate magic or magic you learn, and even the most powerful wizards need to carry their spells with them at all times. So this opens up the possibility of someone maybe getting in over their head with a spell they acquire, you know, they can miscast it or just generally cause trouble with it. And this shows the spellcasting section. So spells cost stamina, so wizards will weaken themselves as they cast, even if the spell fails. There's a risk of mishaps happening if you fail as well. And there's an example spell here, it's the armor spell, it costs four stamina points, and it basically gives you uh, the equivalent of magical heavy armor for d6 rounds. It also glows in the dark, so you can uh, read by it by the looks of things as well, which is uh, really nice. Uh, and that's Warlock, or a fair amount of it. What can I say? I love the style, the tone, the simplicity of the system, and a callback to two of my absolute favorite RPGs, Warhammer and Fighting Fantasy. I cannot wait to give this game a go, and I can't wait to see what they come up with next for it. Uh, if you think this game is for you, please please check it out at Drive Through, uh, Drive Through RPG. As of recording, it is still only five pounds. Uh, that works out about six dollars or so for my colonial uh, viewers. Um, and uh, if, like me, you love British role playing or you want to uh, give this a go, share your thoughts in the comments. I'd, I'd love to hear ideas for what sort of characters and adventures you would run in this sort of game. Uh, if you liked the video, or if you disliked it and stuck to the end, uh, either way, let me know. And if you want more reviews and content from myself, please subscribe. I uh, crave your validation. You can also find me in all the usual social media places, so check the description below for details. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, stay safe, stay connected, and have a great game.